It's been completely crazy, obviously, the transitioning period, just where we've been in the last four years. Uh, it's pretty wild, uh, but, but I think it's good for the sport, you know? I mean, look at all the cars that are at these racetracks and how many people were getting in the stands. It's, it's uh, pretty cool to see, you know, just how far Dirt Late Mile Racing's really come. And when I mean, you look at just the streaming stuff and, and all the different stuff that happened during the COVID years, um, what happened right after that, just the stream and, um, you know, the Intercontinental, really, I, I just feel like it put a bigger spotlight on, on Dirt Late Mile Racing and it's, it's going the right direction. You know, used to the two national tours, Water Bout Laws, Lucas Oil, or back in the day, even Have a Tampa and Stars, they would come together maybe five times a year. Now, these midweek shows has brought these guys together almost every other weekend. The sport has changed so much more as far as being competitive, more money. The cars, the technology is just pretty much out of hand right now. When I first started racing, we had an open trailer with four tires and wheels and a, and a jack and some jack stands. You can win one night and not make the race the next night. Uh, you can be the number one driver in the country and sit on the stands. Like me, I go to Spoon River, never even crossed my mind. I knew I was not probably going to be the best, but I said, surely I'll make the race. Hell, I didn't even make the race. So, And didn't feel bad. Ricky Thornton's right behind me. so. It's crazy. It's tough. It just shows you how how hard everybody's working, and um, you know you got you can't mess up. You cannot do anything to get you behind. And you know, 2020 is one of our more successful years we've had in forever. Um, I don't even use that notebook anymore. I mean, you know, we were confident. We were a dominant car, and now we can't run near the same stuff we did then. We're not even doing the same things today that we did in speed weeks, and that's how rapidly it's changing. And the biggest thing I see right now, every week there's something new on the market. Um, you know, from shock to springs or setup or the body or something at Longhorn Change or Rocket or this or that. You know, whether you're buying Longhorns or Rockets or whatever, it's we're all buying the same stuff. We got Clements motors and Cornette motors and, and whatnot. And Everybody's on the daggone same stuff, so what made you look like a hero before and look like you had all kind of talent, maybe you didn't have that much talent, you just had a little more knowledge. Well, you, you affiliate yourself with a, a chassis manufacturer and a shot company, and you and you can rely on those guys for their technology and because they're all data testing against their competitors. The springs we're putting on them, the load numbers, and, and of course you walk in here and see the machines we got. You got shock dynos, you got spring smashers, and you're like, oh Lord, here we go. <laughs> I mean, we're staring at computers now versus before we was just staring at the race cars. These guys are driving them so hard so sideways, wide open, where me, Moyer, Bloomquist, McDowell, we kind of kept them straight, done our thing. And I think in a 100 lap race, that's where you see the older guys creep up to the front. But in these 50 lap races, 30 lap races, whatever, they're balls out. You just really got to be after it every lap, every minute, every, I mean, you got to give 110% every lap you're out there. We're not going home Monday to another job. This is it. So our performance is what makes our living. And so it, it's very hard and, and there, there's, from team to team to team, I'd say there's very little information being shared. But for us, can we call Longhorn Chassis? Can we call Bill Stein? Absolutely. And when you hang up the phone, you know without a shadow of doubt, you've got good information. Can I call Kevin? 100%. I've been on the phone with him twice today already. And uh, so the support's there, but when you start out here, we're all selfish. I mean, if you really think about it, that's what I told Darley yesterday. I said, we're all selfish, so we, we're out for ourselves, because I mean, that's what pays the bills. At the end of the day, after all that's said and done, you can start the night out with 10 drivers with 10 identical cars, and by the end of the night, you're gonna have 10 different ones. Because when they come back in, they've all got a different opinion on what they felt. So it leads them down a little path you know, one would say, well, I needed a little bit here, a little bit there. So at the end of the day, I still think the driver's input has the most influence. Still the same Eldora, still going to be the same deal, but yes, it, everything has changed a lot, you know, with, with all the streaming and stuff, uh, the way the shows ran and everything. So I say, but it's, you're still there, you're still at Eldora, you still see the people. We kind of forget about all that once we get in there. You've got to be good every time you hit that racetrack and uh, the, the amount of cars that go there and the stout field of competition it's just crazy so you got to be on your game and you just go back and you think of all the drivers all the great drivers that have raced in a place like Eldora I think it's a it's a place that it takes every single 
thing to happen right. You have to, like, some places you can be a really good driver and win, some places you can have a good car and win, but you gotta have it all there to win. And uh, if you win it there, that just goes to show how good your program is. So um, that's what everyone wants. Overton wins the 26th Dirt Lake Model Dream.